Hi there, welcome to the uh, 1998 Return Future Society Prometheus Awards. Uh, Bernard Benji was going to present the award, but he had to cancel at the last minute for the convention. So we are going to do an impromptu recruitment uh, of Bill Krickenberger to present. Who's that? Ron. He's Bill. I'm Ron. I'm sorry. I'm Bill. He's Ron. He's, Bill is coming up later. So Ron Krickenberger from the Libertarian Party is going to present the Prometheus Awards. You're welcome, Ron. Thank you. Um, there's actually a sm small problem with me presenting the Prometheus Award tonight, and that's because I'm not yet a member of the Prometheus Society. <laughs> and so it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time, and I figured that right now it might be the most appropriate time before I present the award. So in order to become an advisory member, I'd like to present you with, unfortunately I don't have any real money, I'm going to have to use Federal Reserve notes. Is that <laughs> <laughs> it's 20, 50, 75. Thank you very much, Andrew. Right? <laughs> Thanks, folks. And a lot of people know that if I'm at a libertarian gathering, it's not uncommon for me to stand up and ask other people to donate to whatever cause I'm working for at that particular moment. So I'd like to encourage the, the, the folks in the room as well, if you are not yet a member of the Prometheus Society, please do what I've just done and join the, at the end of the program. Prometheus Award was started back in 1982, I believe, by L. Neal Smith. Uh, it's been presented for the best libertarian science fiction work ever since then. The award is a very, very nice award, and it has a very libertarian theme to it. It is a gold coin, which uh, we can all appreciate as being real money, not the Federal Reserve notes that our government prints out for us. The finalists for the Prometheus Award for this year were Paul Anderson for A Fleet of Stars, C.J. Cherry for Finity's End, Bart Costco for Nanotime, Ken McLeod for The Stone Canal. <laughs> F. Paul Wilson for Deep as the Marrows. And the winner is, and we'll have to uh, fake the envelope being ripped open here. <laughs> the winner of the Prometheus Award for this year is Ken McLeod for The Stone Canal. Ken is unfortunately not able to be here with us this evening, but accepting uh, the award for him is his friend and co-writer, Pat Cadigan. Pat? Thank you. Someone pointed out, this is not unlike having Hunter S. Thompson address a meeting of the DEA. <laughs> <laughs> But the fact is that it is a tribute to, uh, to uh, the spirit of libertarianism that not only can an old Bolshevik like me address a gathering like you, but uh, Robert Heinlein and I were friends from 1976 to the day he died. And, uh, and he taught me an awful lot about uh, freedom and, uh, and how to be civilized. Anyway, on behalf of Ken McLeod, I'm very happy to accept this award. And Ken says, well, folks, you seem to have done it again. You've gone and given the award to a book which American publishers think American readers wouldn't understand. Too British, don't you know? <laughs> Too left-wing. Did you guys give him the right award? <laughs> <laughs> And we all know that a serious interest in libertarianism and a serious interest in SF just don't overlap, right? <laughs> and I quote, ha! <laughs> That's just the way I wrote it, too. So what can I say? First of all, thanks. Thanks to all of you for considering it and to the judges for choosing it. The award means a great deal to me personally and professionally. It means a lot, to me, a lot to me to be mentioned in the same breath as the other finalists, to mention only one because he's been around longer than any of us, Poole Anderson. His stories, The Last of the Deliverers, and The Three-Cornered Wheel had a permanent effect on my mind for which I want to especially thank him now. I second that. Works for me. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Second, I have to say I agree with another finalist, Elmer Smith, about one thing at least. 
You can't win a culture war if you ain't got any culture. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm quoting, okay? <laughs> we have got the beginnings of a culture, like John Wilde says in The Stone Canal, my shaky pile of books by Proudhon and Tucker, Herbert and Spencer, Robert Heinlein and Robert Anton Wilson, was building up to a reliable launch tower of the mind. Let's add to it, let's join with the libertarian future society in building more launch towers of the mind. And even an old Bolshevik like me isn't gonna argue with that. <laughs> Third, thanks again and best wishes to you all for space and freedom and the green hills of Earth. I just have some real money to get back to the UK with, so just in case I get into trouble. Oh, can I call you guys if I get stopped at customs with the... Yeah. <laughs> Mention our name. Be careful with that. There are a lot of export uh, prohibitions these days. Oh. You never know. <laughs> uh, I appreciate the honor of having been asked to uh, present the, the first Prometheus Award tonight. I actually came here to simply cover this event for Libertarian Party News, uh, but now I think it will get even more extensive coverage. <laughs> Uh, to present the Hall of Fame Award, which uh, goes to one of the classic works of science fiction uh, that also has a libertarian theme, our next presenter will be Bill Rich. I'd like to continue a certain tradition established here three minutes ago by renewing my membership, which is time, to the uh, Libertarian Future Society. Back when I was editor, I actually got a free membership, but you know, there ain't no such thing as a free membership. <laughs> the Hall of Fame is an award given to books that might have been overlooked for previous Prometheus Awards because the award didn't exist when it was, uh, when this book was published, or because the book has stood the test of time and may not have gotten honored when it first came out. There's been some severe competition in years. The nominees for the Hall of Fame Award are Paul Anderson, Orion Shall Rise, Robert A. Heinlein, Time Enough for Love, James P. Hogan, Mirror Maze, H. Beam Piper, Lone Star Planet, and Eric Frank Russell, Wasp. And the winner is Time Enough for Love by Robert A. Hunter. Thank you. I'm also accepting this award for Mrs. Virginia Heinlein. With many, in fact, I would say all but two of the uh, Hall of Fame nominees are currently deceased, so they cannot accept it themselves. But I, would, I really want to thank you all for letting me accept this award from Mrs. Heinlein because Heinlein has been the keystone to my libertarianism. A few years ago, Jerome Touchley wrote a book about how people become libertarianism, libertarians by calling it, it usually begins with Ayn Rand. And I'm sure for lots of libertarians out there, it began with Ayn Rand. With me, it get, began with Robert A. Heinlein. And it began with a novel called Have Spacesuit, Will Travel, which I read when I was in third grade. A brilliant, subtly libertarian book. So I'm very pleased whenever Heinlein wins a Prometheus uh, Hall of Fame award. This is especially nice that he wins for Time Enough for Love, because the later Heinlein is quite often criticized, especially among science fiction fans who aren't libertarians. And this is a novel that is really wonderful in its libertarian theme and its exploration of the character of Lazarus Long. It is, it is a wonderful book. And I'm really thankful to have it honored here today. Also, there is a current trend in modern science fiction to say that Robert A. Heinlein wasn't a libertarian, wasn't even right wing. This, there are people out there who say this. I swear there are people out there who say this. And all I have to do is tell them, Read the damn books. <laughs> read Moon is a Harsh Mistress. Read Starship Troopers. Read uh, Time Enough for Love. Read Double Star. Read almost any book by him. Read If This Goes On, published in 1940. 
If Robert A. Heinlein isn't a libertarian, then what are we? <laughs> Jesus Christ, you know? No, we're not Jesus Christ. But I digress. Mrs. Heinlein will be receiving this uh, in September when we go visit her. And I want to thank you all who voted for this book and even thank you people who didn't vote for it. She'll appreciate it. He has several Prometheus Awards and, and several Hugos, and I know that Jenny values the Prometheus Awards even more. Thank you very much. Now, ordinarily, that would conclude the Prometheus Awards, but we're going to have two announcements, rather one announcement and one brief second or third award. Uh, the first announcement is this book here, which is finally in print, Victor Kerman's Prometheus Award-winning novel, Kings of the High Frontier, previously only available on the internet, self-published. And, uh, or, or rather published through Publis.com, Daniel Schulman's pr uh, press. And it's out now, and you can buy it downstairs for $24.95, which in my opinion is a pretty damn good deal. And the artist of this wonderful cover, Rob Price, sitting back there, he will autograph the book as well. And he, this, this is a brilliant cover. Let me just fold it out there. He, he has done justice and more to this book. So if, if, you, if you value literature, space, and freedom, I would go get this book now. And uh, then, breaking with tradition, because we've all only presented uh, Prometheus and the Hall of Fame Award, we're going to today present a special award, uh, one that we thought we needed to present because we're presenting it for a rare event, and that is the first ever libertarian science fiction anthology, which is Free Space, edited by Brad Lineweaver and Edward Kramer. Brad is not here today, but Edward Kramer, his co-editor and uh, one of the creators and, and, and movers behind this book, is here to accept what's called a Special Executive Committee Award from the LFS for Free Space. And I'd just like to present the award. <laughs> <laughs> Speech? 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 <laughs> Hold the book up, please! <laughs> Thank you very much for this opportunity. Brad and I spent a lot of time thinking about how we would achieve an anthology like this, how we would get this out to the general population, and how not to have it billed overtly as a libertarian anthology to get in the way of sales to the general marketplace. Um, we have we spent a lot of time and effort in directing how the book would be put together and the selection of the stories and authors, making sure that every Prometheus Award winner has been included in this anthology. We're very incredibly happy with this book as its tour. Tom Doherty has been uh, a firm and absolute supporter in this, and the trade edition of Free Space will come out this October from tour. It says a lot also that it went to trade as opposed to paperback, and they're going to start another push using the reviews, which have been exceptionally good for the book and for the stories. And especially, um, Rob Sawyer is the hand you're dealt in this book, uh, is nominated for the Hugo for Best Short Story. So hopefully, um, if he wins the Hugo Award, which I really would like him to do so, <laughs> that would be a huge bonus for the book, for the popularity of this, and for the additional reviews it may get. Thank you all for your support and for purchasing the book. The book has done very well as hardcover, uh, and Tor is exceptionally pleased with the results and with the product. I think this is a start. I think an additional um, books like this will follow. One final thing, just making note again of Victor's Coleman's Kings of the High Frontier. Vince Harper, who was the publisher for Barish's Publishing, which Vince is right back, raise your hand. 